I've got some sad news for everyone involved in Rugby Town Football Club. Owner status will retire by the 30th of the 4th. Yes, that is right. The man who once upon a time brought me into this club, Brian Melvin. We've had good times. We've had bad times. He's going to be leaving us by the end of the season. And I do feel a bit sad about it. I mean, on the one hand, he did almost fire me that time. But on the other hand, as far as owners go, he's granted a lot of requests over the years. I guess I just have to hope that whoever comes in to replace him is going to have as much of a focus as I do on the youth recruitment because I now want to maintain this at five stars for the rest of the save game. Now, as you watch this video, it is the 1st of January, assuming you're watching this video the first day it goes up. I mean, if you're watching it a year late, I suppose it might be January 1st, 2025. I, I don't know. Who watches videos a year late? If you're watching this in the future, please let me know that you're watching this down in the comments. Today, though, it's the 1st of January in game, so I'm a bit hungover in my role-playing sense in Football Manager. You might be hungover watching this, but the good news for both of us is it is an an FA Cup, well, maybe special today because we've made it to the third round of the FA Cup, but we've been drawn against Mansfield and with respect to Mansfield, who are in a relegation scrap at the bottom of League Two, kind of fancy us to beat them. Of course, last episode, we dispatched a perhaps slightly better League Two opposition in Torquay, but we were playing at Butlin Road for this game. For the game today against Mansfield, we are away. But in spite of that, I kind of back us to win this game. And if we do win this game, I will come back for the FA Cup fourth round as the second game of today's episode. If we don't win this game, slightly less sexy, uh, we'll do the away day and away game at Boston United. So for my sake and your sake and everyone's sake, I really want to win the first game. The January transfer window is open. I've made some sales. I signed a player in a position I didn't really need a player. I mean, what else was I going to say? The transfer window is open. Stuff's happening. Let's run the intro and we'll cover it all and more in, well, 22 and a half seconds. How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to the channel. Obviously, if you're hungover watching this video, I hope you had a lovely New Year's Eve. I hope you celebrated it responsibly. And I hope, of course, that 2024 is going to be a fantastic year for you and for me. And, of course, for our rugby team who, well, in the year 2028, want to get promoted. And I've signed another player from Tottenham. Yeah, it's the third player I've signed from Tottenham this save game this season. Of course, Jude left Tottenham last season. He was released. Another man who was released was Josh Keeley. And I feel like Jude got on the blower, got his band of merry men back together. And Josh Keeley is one of those players. I didn't need a goalkeeper. I still don't think I needed a goalkeeper. But this guy, if I just compare him with Simkin... I mean, he is just a massive, massive upgrade, the 24-year-old. You might have noticed his wages as well. He's joined us on £350 a week. I feel like someone needs to explain to Josh the concept of minimum wage and his own worth. £350 for this guy is mad. And there is a two-year contract extension after promotion. So realistically, he can now be here for the next, what, four and a half years? on £350. I know it says he's a backup. He's not a backup. He's played the last five league games for us. He's played quite well in them too. Two other players to cover real quick. The first, I discussed the possibility of signing last episode. He has now officially joined us. Sean McLaughlin, 31 years old. This guy, model citizen personality, has joined us on a fairly long-term deal for a 31-year-old. His initial contract takes him to the end of next year. But if we were to get promoted, two years get added onto that. At 31 years old, though, this guy is an absolutely phenomenal centre-back because waltzed in to the starting eleven. it's safe to say. We are using him for mentoring. I'm hoping he's going to pass on his personality to some of our younger players, but a great little centre-back option. And one final signing we've made. Been a while since we stole someone from Ross County. Uh, in Swanee here was released by Ross County, so I've just decided to snap him up. Question marks over his potential. His low determination means development might be difficult, but on £30 a week for the 18-year-old, can you really go wrong? I don't think so. If you were paying particularly close attention to the transfers out, you might have noticed maybe a surprise sale, but with McLaughlin joining us, I did feel like I could maybe move on a player or two. And Sean Stewart, our backup centre-back slash left-back, is the man I've decided to move on. He joined us on a free transfer, what, 12 months ago? With his inconsistency, his lack of good, important matches, his injury proneness as well, when a bit of £200,000 came in from Shrewsbury... 
I kind of had to take it. Another player who's left us to go to Shrewsbury, of course, is Jasper Moon. This was a sale that was already agreed and organised. It's officially gone through. If you're wondering, Jack, how have Shrewsbury been able to buy two of your players for £200,000? Glad you asked. I wondered the same thing. They had a tycoon takeover two years ago. They had the tycoon takeover and then got relegated to League Two. They were promoted last year. Right now, they're 11th in League One. And well, God bless them, they keep buying my players. So yeah, if they want to buy any more of my backup players for a few hundred thousand pounds, that sounds good with me. So in terms of the new signings, Keeley and McLaughlin have been slotting in in goal and at centre-back. Both players joined us before January 1st, of course, because they're free agents, they could join us whenever. The sales that I just talked about literally left on a bus today, never to be seen again. Now, of course, last episode, we played three matches. We won three matches. We scored a load defensively. We weren't at our very best. We conceded in, well, every single one. It, it wasn't very good. When you look at our recent form, you'd be forgiven for thinking maybe it looks a bit patchy. A win against Hartlepool was good. A win in the FA Trophy was good. Wins against Chester and Fleetwood. Very, very nice. Fleetwood, if you're wondering, have they won a game yet, Jack? Uh, bad news to the Fleetwood Massive. They've not won a game. They're still on negative points. There's only 17 games left of the season. But after that game against Fleetwood and with the fixture schedule getting a little bit rammed, we have rotated things around. It's maybe caused us to drop a few points here and there, but everyone is kind of in a similar boat. This point in the year is particularly intense on your squad. No one's been flawless, fortunately for us. So despite this 4-1 defeat against Telford, it's not been disastrous. We actually took the lead in this game then completely threw it away. I want to claim that we are really unlucky or something. We really weren't. Telford were bloody good in this game. And in some also not so good news, Shipston got injured in this game. So yeah, he's had a couple of injuries since he joined us now. Far from ideal. Still out for up to two weeks. We did bounce back from that result against Telford with a 6-2 win against Barrow. Nice variety of goal scorers there as we played a rotated 11. A draw against Woking wasn't ideal, but it was nice to rescue a late point. Jude with the 87th minute goal. And most recently, we took on Fylde for the second time in a month, this time in the league. Jude grabbed two. Bradley Edwards grabbed a goal. And yeah, I mean, you can just see here the sea of green ratings. Jude is very, very good. And having joined the team in, I think, the start of November, end of October, he's now the top goal scorer in the league with 22 goals. Yeah, he's been mad also assist-wise. And Gomer and Edwards right up there. Ricky D and Slate up there too. We like to score goals here at Rugby Town. Like I mentioned in the intro, today's focus I would like to be on the FA Cup. When it comes to the league, with our really good run of form and the good results against immediate league rivals last episode, we have managed to pull out a little bit of a gap. We are nine points clear of Yeovil, although we have played a game more. I believe a lot of the teams in our league are playing today as we play in the FA Cup. But really, the league is in a... Well, the best situation it's been in all year. It's been in a ridiculously close league. We have started to pull away a little bit. Jude is a big reason behind that. But today, I feel like we can afford to get distracted a bit. Starting with the FA Cup. Mansfield Town is our first opposition today. It's an away day to the One Call Stadium, a stadium with over 9,000 capacity. I'd like to think there'll be some good footage of it. Is there some good footage of it? Let's go north and find out. So for today's away day, we are heading north, not to Wilton. I don't know, Wil Wilton trying to steal the limelight here. Uh, no, we're heading north to Mansfield, which is just north of Nottingham in Nottinghamshire. Here is Mansfield. Where is the football club? A square patch of grass. I'll tell you what, that might be the fastest I've found a stadium in forever in this series. I don't know why, but as a little kid, I always used to get Mansfield and Macclesfield muddled up. Of course, completely different football clubs, in case that wasn't obvious. They're completely different places. Here's the football stadium. Solar panels on the roof. I know I'm meant to be like Green Thumb. You know, I'm really supportive of all these like eco-friendly enterprises. They just look ugly though, don't they? What doesn't look ugly though? Ah, oh, the car park. Look at the car park. There's lots of accessibility parking here, which is really, really good next to ground. Bonus points for that. And next door, there's a shopping center, which I'm almost certain you can just park in and then sneak across to the stadium from. Here is Mansfield Stadium. Big fan of it. Even bigger fan of the fact their club shop is just called the club shop. They don't have to call it a superstore or a mega store. People are still going to turn up. Um. Actually, it looks quite pretty from the outside, doesn't it? The other thing I like is, you know, they've kept the colour scheme going with the stadium. We love a stadium with a colour scheme that matches the colour. Like, even the ticket booths they painted blue. And after you've done playing a match, you can just go to Dunelm and get new curtains. Or a new kitchen. Or, well, go swimming. Swim. 
I guess there's a swimming pool there. No idea. Now, from the outside, this stadium has been phenomenal. Unfortunately, there's one dot in the stadium, so this is very much a do-or-die scenario, and oh my word, it's drone footage. It's drone footage, ladies and gentlemen. You know, like training pitches next door, fantastic car park. As I mentioned earlier, the accessibility, we love that. Coach parking as well. Oh, I mean, the only thing that's letting it down is the solar panels. But on this old footage from 2022, there are no solar panels. I feel like this is an away day that's just kind of been designed for me, isn't it? You've got the car parking, pitches next door, uh, the shopping centre, albeit, you know, you go swimming or something. And even on this side, you've still got a bit of that old school community feel where, you know, this club is very much clearly built in the heart of the town. Loads of old houses that just border onto a cute little stadium that we didn't really get to see enough of from the inside. But, you know, it's not symmetrical on all sides. It's a bit of a mismatch, but... <sighs> I'll tell you what, in terms of away days, they've already ticked off a lot of the tick boxes for things I look for. Not even talked about the park and the pond next door. We might have another away day today, so I don't want to set the standards too high, but this might be the best away day of the year so far. Mansfield, 8 out of 10. I'm going to say it, 8 out of 10. That was, I, this just, I like it. It's cute. It's great. This is why we do the away days. Some people accuse me of being too passionate about away days. No idea what they're talking about. Anyway, with that all said and done, we have got this FA Cup game. It's against Mansfield of League Two. We've already knocked out one League Two team. Last year, we knocked out a League One team. I kind of back us to win this game. We'll keep a close eye on some of the games going on in our league at the exact same time as ourselves, of course. These teams playing are all playing their teams they have in hand on us. So in terms of team news for today's game, I talked about Shipston's injury. One injury I've not talked about is Norman Hamilton. This is not an ideal one. Pulled his hamstring against Fylde at the end of December. Going to be out for two weeks. Would potentially be back for the fourth round of the FA Cup. That round of fixtures set to be played in three weeks' time. And elsewhere, one other player to be aware of, Sam Kelly, has been injured for a little while, of course. One of the products of our academy in one of our very early years. A player who has grown with the squad but is probably right on the peripheries of things right now kind of don't want to sell him, would like to see him continue to develop. It is a little bit of a shame that he picked up this torn hamstring in November. He is slowly getting back to fitness, but he's not fair enough today. We will see live commentary debuts today for McLaughlin and Keeley, the two Irish players coming into the team. Elsewhere, Pritchard is going to play as Almazala. Coventry is going to play as the defensive midfielder. a hole Chuddy drops down to the bench. I'm trying to prepare for life without him, so slowly but surely I'm trying to phase him out of the team this year, kind of reduce the reliance that we have on him to grind out results. I've just noticed I get two extra spots on the bench. Uh, Stevenson, you can come in and elsewhere. Well, to be honest, with all the players out, we're running a little bit bare. We'll give Freckleton a spot. If we could get a result here, it would be absolutely mad. If we don't get a result here, a trip to Boston. No one wants to have a trip to Boston do that. I've lived in Boston. You don't want to go to Boston, trust me. There's probably some Americans out there thinking, oh, Boston, but we have a city called Boston. It must be great. No, it's not great. It's nothing like your Boston. And they don't talk funny like people in your Boston either. I mean, they talk funny, just not that funny. Okay, 15 minutes into this game, we are having more possession. We're yet to have a highlight in this game for either team. We are having more shots, but we've not yet hit the target, and now Slate's picked up a book in. Mansfield are playing 4-4-2, so I'm a little bit wary of their fullbacks on the overlap. But in a game that's been a bit slow to get started, finally, a little bit of action. It's played to Edwards. He lays it back to Ngoma, who pulls the trigger, and the keeper... Saves it really unconvincingly. We do still have a corner. Coventry is going to be the man over it. It's not exactly a sellout here, is it, at Mansfield? If you're hoping for a big share of ticket sales, I think we might be living in La La Land. There's lots and lots of empty seats here. And, I, I mean, based on what they've seen in the first 33 minutes, I can't really blame people for not showing up. Five minutes left of this first half. Well, seven minutes, if you want to be really precise, plus added time. At the moment, we've not really seen a great deal from either team. Mansfield, been surprisingly resilient so far. I say that, having taken on Torquay in the previous round, and, well, been 3-0 up against them and really dominated them. We've had shots in this game, we've had some chances, but we've not been our clinical selves. Perhaps that can change here, though. Slate, the left-back, on the overlap, plays it inside. Callum Goldsmith coming in for Norman Hamilton, finds the back of the net. I feel like Goldsmith is a player who I don't big up enough. You know, he kind of lives in the shadow of Norman Hamilton, but he is our vice-captain. He is a player with some insane leadership properties, some great potential, has a, a wonderful effort, and, well, he's 
scored a really important goal for us there. One minute left at the end of this first half. We've had 12 shots in total. There was clearly a flurry of chances at the end of things. Indeed, there was. Look at this XG story. Loads and loads of chances to end things out. But the end of the first 45... We're only narrowly ahead. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. We've got a few players who are demotivated and confused. Slate, Goldsmith, you, you two come here. I know you've got a golden assist, so you're probably unhappy. I'm just going to tell you, you're playing well. They both hate me. Ricky D on the far side. I've not really sung the praises of Ricky D. He's got the second best rating in the entire league behind Jude. He has been absolutely phenomenal at right back. Of course, formerly of Brighton, we snapped him up after he was released. He was a left back. We've converted him to a right back. And I feel like he's just been one of our big standout players. Keep an eye on him on this side here because his deliveries into the box are very, very good. Here he is, speaking of the devil, dancing, duking, puts it in and... Uh, did that hit the post? I think he's I think he's crossed it against the post there. It's fallen to our man and we've scored, and Ricky D has been given the assist. I'm sure he's going to claim he meant that. You know, it's like a skill move. He's gone and just smashed it against the post. It's like some Hollywood stuff. He saw the pass from a mile away. In fact, looking at it there, I think the keeper's made a mess of it. I thought he hit the post. I think the keeper's just shinned it straight to our striker. I'm not going to complain. We're two goals up. Might have confused him at half time. It's not impacted his ability to put the football in the back of the net. Goldsmith, I'm really sorry. Okay, commentary is on a booking. Slate has also picked up a booking, which is a little less than ideal. I'm going to bring in Jamie Stevenson at left back. This is a guy who I brought in with Stuart leaving and going to Shrewsbury. There's a little bit of a gap at left back. Stevenson has been playing with our under 18s, but training with the first team. Formerly a Man City, a good little player who's played some games for us. Hasn't yet had a truly exemplary performance. Be good if you could have it here. And elsewhere, with Contra on a booking, I'm going to take him off. We're going to bring in a whole chuddy to hopefully change things up. And Slate's been sent off. Slate has been sent off right as I was about to sub him off. I can't believe it. Okay, game plan here has to change slightly. Although I don't think I'm going to change it too radically. I am going to bring in Stevenson still. I am going to bring in a whole Chuddy, I think, as well. But I'm going to take off Pritchard in this game and give him a little bit of a rest. Going to try and set up with a good defensive shape and just try and kind of catch the opposition on the break, I think. Wingbacks, you guys can now go on defend. As for ourselves here, we are going to keep the high line but not engage as high up the pitch. And instead, I think the game plan here is to just try and have as much of the ball around the back as we can. And if we can have possession, well, then they can't create as much. This game was going so well. It was looking oh so simple. And then Slate, for the first time, I want to say, in his time at the club, gets sent off like an absolute moron. Good news, though, for Stevenson is he's got a chance to maybe show us what he's made of. And, well, in this highlight here, we actually did get the ball forward slightly. Unfortunately, now, they're getting the ball forward, and they have got players surging forward as well. The formation that we're playing means we're a little lighter in the centre of midfield, but I'd like to think we can still do some defending, as they're going to have an effort, and that... I mean, by Mogensen, is just a ridiculous goal, isn't it? Ball work down the far side, and then whilst it's laid inside here, we've got so many players in the box, you think the situation's under control, and then a man with a green headband smashes into the top corner. That's annoying. I wasn't attacking. I am going to switch down to positive here. I feel like we've got a long 14 minutes ahead. Of course, if this game is a draw, it does just go to a replay. So if we want to just have a replay... Th that wouldn't be disastrous, I guess. I mean, it wouldn't be what I was hoping for going into things today, but it certainly wouldn't be the end of the world. Going to be a test for us here. Ricky D on a knock with a knock. I absolutely detest, by the way. Hopefully that's nothing serious. But yeah, we're on the back foot again here. Stevenson thrusting at left back at the moment, doing an adequate job for us. What I'd love to get is just a breakaway goal. They are committing men up the pitch. And they're launching it long. We've got to defend these big balls in. And so far, well, so good for us. But Morganson, the goal scorer, is going to let it wide to, wide to Ewing, who crosses it in. And Whitman Brown scores. Ricky D, you had that knock. I've kept on. And I feel like the injury's hampered him. This really does remind me of the Crawley Town game. Remember the Crawley game? Have I learned anything from it? Apparently not. It is always difficult when you're taking on a team in the league above you. <laughs> And you go down a man. See, my thinking was defensively, if we can have just the flat back four, defensive mid, we can just see out this game, maybe ping it forward and catch them on the break. I do feel like the injury to, well, uh, Ricky D has impacted us there. Both of our starting fullbacks, arguably two of our best players off the pitch. Lissa has got to play as a wing back at right back. 
to see out this game. We've tried holding onto the ball and playing it out from the back. It has not worked, let's be honest. So with that in mind, let's just go back to what we know and play with a man lighter in midfield and just try and make some magic happen. Six minutes left of this game. A replay is not disastrous, just to be clear. You might be wondering, why have you gone for it then, Jack? I, I don't know. There's the voice. The vo I've talked about the concept of the voice before. The voice is speaking to me. I've changed things and gone attacking. There is a last minute corner. Welch is there. And we've actually hit the post with what is probably the last chance of the game. There is 15 seconds left. That was our chance to absolutely steal this game from the jaws of a draw. Doesn't sound as impressive as the jaws of defeat, does it? 2-2, two -two, ball goes out of play. According to the official or the commentator, it was an absolute classic. I didn't think it was a classic. I mean, if we want to find a silver lining, Callum Goldsmith was good in this game. So, well done, Callum. £5,000 well spent. Good news for everyone, we get to play Mansfield again for the next game of today's episode. I dangled the carrot of Boston United or the fourth round, you get neither. Meanwhile, in our league, did anything interesting happen here? Rochdale could only draw, Yeovil could only draw nil-nil as well. So with everyone playing their games behind us, we're still eight points clear. That's really, really good. A lot of the teams competing with us did not win. Slate is suspended for two games. Ricky D's out for two to three days. Apparently, we've got players with fitness concerns, and now we've got an extra game to play. Goody. And that extra game is in three days' time, so I'm going to go rest up the players. That was round one. Coming up next, round two, Mansfield. I really feel like we should beat them at home. I feel like we should have beaten them that game. Slate, you are a Muppet, son. Didn't realise this was going to be the case. Obviously, we'd play Mansfield in a few days' time still. The FA Cup fourth round draw is happening now, so we get to find out who we might get to play um, in, well, this game. This is suddenly either going to really elevate the stakes of the Mansfield game, or I'm going to feel less excited about the possibility of winning it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm waiting for the teams to come out here with excitement. I'm looking for a big, sexy game. Going on a long run of easy games in the FA Cup is nice, but the reality is you don't really get that much prize money. The majority of the money comes from sharing ticket sales. So with that in mind, it'd be nice to get in a situation where we get to share the ticket sales with one of the big boys. Where are we going to come out in all of this? We're, we're, we've not come out yet. Where are we? Where, excuse me, game. We are, we are in this, aren't we? We are. I can confirm we're at home against Leeds or Oxford. I mean, it's not as sexy as it could have been, but Leeds or Oxford would be quite fun. Just, just a shame it'll be at home. Mansfield or Rugby Town will play either Leeds or Oxford in the fourth round. Have Leeds and Oxford played yet? They haven't played yet. I guess that's to do with the scheduling. Leeds have got a lot of games. I imagine Oxford are also playing a lot of games. Oh, my word. Oxford. Okay. Oxford aren't very good in the championship. I think it's safe to say that we would play Leeds, but in order to play Leeds, we do have to win this next game. Two days away. I'm resting up the players. Oh, I'm not ready for it. I also I also know I'm not going to be able to play my regular starting eleven. That slate suspension is annoying. Ricky D probably isn't going to be fit. Bradley Edwards needs a rest. I don't feel prepared. Something else I forgot to mention earlier on in this episode. I've had the youth intake preview through last month. I don't want to get too excited. A goalkeeper, a centre-back, a centre-mid, B strikers. I, th I feel like when it comes to these grades, you can only really take them with a pinch of salt. But with our current youth intake kind of stats and stuff, and, and of course, the new head of youth development. I'm expecting magic in March. And if I don't get it, I'm going to be very bitter. Okay, FA Cup third round replay at home against Mansfield. When we took on Torquay at home, we demolished them. I do feel like there is a massive home away advantage in Football Manager. Safe to say that our team for this game is looking a little bit kind of cobbled together. We are without both of our starting fullbacks. Batumba is going to be playing at right back. We brought this guy in from Fulham in the summer as a backup option. And at left back, Stevenson is going to play at left back. Given the fact that our fullbacks have been two of our best players this year, there's a lot of pressure on these guys slotting in for us to do the business. Elsewhere, McLaughlin and Lissa are going to play alongside Keeley at the heart of our defence. Coventry, I am going to drop for this game in favour of Hull Chuddy. All of a sudden, there's all these green lines. It kind of looks like we're summoning something. There's a pentagram appearing in the midfield. Pritchard, Edwards and Goma up top. Goldsmith was absolutely superb last game. Got us those two goals. Unfortunately for us, Hamilton's still not fit, so we're going to stick with him. And Jude, who was uncharacteristically quiet last game, 
I'm hoping it's going to show up in front of the home fans. Okay, there is a kickoff highlight. I don't remember the last time I saw a kickoff highlight at the very start of a game. It's been a while. Is it going to be a good omen? Is it going to be a bad omen? Jude through the middle to Goldsmith. We've got players left and right. Batumba, can he channel? He's in a Ricky D. He holds it up, gives it to Pritchard. We're ahead after 22 seconds. Isaac Pritchard with the goal. Take a bow. I did ask a second ago, didn't I, just before the game, will the fullbacks be able to step up and fill the boots? Well, I'll tell you what, Batumba, he's clearly got Ricky D's shoes. They've got the exact same boots. That's the only logical explanation. It's 1-0. Does go without saying if we win this game, fourth round is tomorrow. I didn't really bargain on there being a replay in this episode when I was planning out how I was going to record and edit things. So blame football manager. Well, I say that. Let's not count the chickens before they've hatched. We've got the eggs. They may or may not be fertilized. We don't know. We need to wait. Although a second egg would be mighty fine. I don't know what I'm talking about either. Something, something to do with eggs. Something to do with eggs. Keely at the back, lays it wide to Batumba. This game has had a bit more action to start things versus the previous game. Maybe that's the home advantage. Maybe the fans are inspiring us. Edwards, look to mile offside there. He's not got on the end of it anyway. And now it's back with their goalkeeper, Pim, who I feel like has had more touches of the ball than anyone else thus far in this game. He is going to look to launch it long. Lissa kills the ball with that first touch. Can we discuss that touch in Goma? Through the middle, this would be a sensational goal. He goes all the way and scores what, I mean, from start to finish, might just be a goal of the season contender. The ball was launched forward. It came down with snow on it. Lissa, the right centre-back, killed it, gave it to Hold Chuddy. He gave it just shy of the halfway line to Ngoma, who then just runs and runs. He's like Forrest Bloody Gump, except... He's got the Happy Gilmore slap shot on his left foot. What a goal that was. In case you can't tell, I did watch the new Chicken Run, Forrest Gump and Happy Gilmore over the Christmas period. I'm just in a cinema kind of mood. We are blockbuster. Stevenson, Goldsmith, got two goals previously. Could get one here. Not with finishing like that. Corner for Mansfield. I want to celebrate a 2-0 lead. I want to be happy. We bottled it last game. It's now 2-1. Do not celebrate anything. Corners have just been a constant issue for us, which is bizarre because we're really good at scoring them. On that occasion there, Keeley didn't even move. He, he is aware that I am paying him that £350 to be a goalkeeper, I hope. They've got another corner. Stop it. Stop it. I'm, I'm not enjoying this. They're in front of their own fans on the far side. We've got it half-headed away. It's now with Roberts, Thompson. There's so many players in the box. Back post it goes... They've scored again. It's 2-2. Why can we not hold a lead against Mansfield? I really did think at 2-0 we had this whole situation under control. Uh, I don't know about anyone else. I, in the first game and this game. We've not even had a man sent off in this game to bottle it. We've just been bad at defending corners. I feel like I should point out at this point, they have had two shots and they've both gone in. It has been that kind of game. They've only had two corners in this game as well. In spite of all of that, though, with three minutes played of added time at the end of the half... It's 2-2. So yeah, for as good as we were, which we weren't that good, we couldn't stop Verlac from scoring two. This guy's got 14 jumping reach and eight heading and he's just bullied our defense. I'm sad. Uh, I really want to throw a water bottle. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I feel like the water bottle throwing is a high risk tactic. Jude though, has not been good here. You've not been good enough so far. Get it to bloody gather. 6.6 .6 rating for Jude. It's not good enough. I'm a little bit wary of fatigue setting in. When you do look at the condition of our players and their players, what I would say is their players do look a little more tired than ours. Maybe that can play into our favour as this game goes on. We have a corner, but Tumber already has one assist. He could get another hit. Although on this occasion, his cross is over hit and dealt with easily. Pritchard, the goal scorer, is going to keep the play alive though. We've got the ball at the back. It's still 2-2. We don't need to panic. Jude is through. Jude has scored. He has also got a knock. Should I be worried? I feel like I should take him off. I don't want to celebrate this goal. I'm too wor busy worrying about the injury. Also, hold Chuddy. Come back into the team today. Two assists in this game. Granted, one of them was that pass to Ngoma on the halfway line. That ball there, though. Magnifique. What is his injury? Knee injury. I don't want to risk a knee injury. As much as I want to win this game, Adam Abbas, I'm going to trust you to come on. Bradley Edwards hasn't been great in this game either. I'm going to move Isaac Pritchard into middle, and I think I'm just going to bring in Gucci, just for a little bit of defensive solidity. I feel like Gucci's a man who can put in a tackle. That might be needed just to see out this result. Also, is anyone else getting deja vu? 
I was very much getting deja vu. That was very like the goal we just scored, wasn't it? 25 minutes and counting at the end of this game. We have been absolutely dominant. They've had two shots on target. They've both found the back of the net. It has, though, been a very even game between ourselves and Mansfield. Given how good we've been in the National League, you might have expected us against one of the lesser League 2 teams to be, well, rather dominant. It's not really materialised like that, although... Well, suddenly from there, we did have a chance to make the scoreline look that little bit more dominant. Mansfield building the ball out from the back, lay it wide to Williams, the right back. Has a little bit of time and space to move into, lays it off to Thompson, the number 21, cutting it inside. Gucci, that's what we brought him on to do there. He wins the ball, gets forward, and now we've maybe got a few players on the attack. They have committed players forward here, Mansfield. Batumba has one assist already, lays it to Hull Chuddy. It's in his zone, it's deflected in, it doesn't matter. It's a man of the match performance, I think, by that guy there. Uh, two goals, or oh, sorry, two assists, one goal. Take a bow, my son. I suppose the question has to be asked, Jack, why did you drop Hull Chuddy for the previous game? I've, I, like I said at the time, I wanted to prepare for life without him. But I don't think anything's going to prepare me for life without him. He's been massive in this game. There is still five minutes left of this game. And given the fact they did score two goals in two minutes, I'm not going to over-celebrate just yet. I do feel like a fifth goal might just settle my nerves. And Goma lays it wide to Stevenson, who's been a little bit quiet in this game. Although that deflected across there was fortunate. The ball's in the back of the net. Stevens has given me an assist. It's 5-2. I'm going to say it. We're into the fourth round. I want to sit here and pretend oh, I was never in doubt. No, it was definitely in doubt at certain points in my mind. Deservedly so, though. We are going to navigate through this result. And I suppose the big question mark now is, is Jude okay? Because if he's injured for a while, that could be problematic for our league form because he's been massive for us. In the other games going on in and around us, uh, in the FA Cup. Did anyone cause a big upset? Stockport knocked out Huddersfield? That might be a shock. Jude is out for two to three days. You know what? I can deal with that. We do get £107,000 for winning that round of the FA Cup. I suppose it's not insignificant money, but hopefully next round we can get on TV, we can play against Leeds, and not Oxford, and, well, get some money in the bank. Hull Chuddy, by the way, did get Man of the Match on an 8.4, which I think that might be one of his first Man of the Match performances he's ever got for the football club. I say that. He's got two this year. He didn't get any in any of the years before that. Apparently, Oxford and Leeds played later than us. So if I hit continue a little bit here, we, we should have that game and result played and stuff. Who are we going to be playing in the next round of the FA Cup? The answer is we still don't know because they drew the first round. Brilliant. You know what? I could hit continue for two more days and find out who we're going to play. I'm going to leave it as a mystery. We do play on that 22nd of January date, though, so that game is not too far away. Quite what the plan is for next episode. I don't have a Scooby-Doo. The plan's been completely ruined by today's game, if I'm being honest. Also, I've got some offers for Slate Tip. Barnsley have offered £220,000 rising to £350,000. I really don't want to sell Slate. Slate does want to talk to Barnsley, so I guess we'll negotiate with them first. Of course, Shrewsbury do have that tycoon takeover, so we know they've got some money. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here, and I don't know if it's because of the sending off recently, but in my mind, if I could get £500,000 to Slate, it would probably be worth moving him on for. Whilst he has been a very, very good player for us this year, he is definitely replaceable, and there were some left-backs I was looking at previously, you might remember. In fact, one of those players I've still got on trial at the club. Lino Sosa, I could maybe just bring in to be the slate replacement. Not as good defensively, but a very, very good player going forward. Suppose, in saying all of that, we probably should get a deal negotiated for slate first. Uh, 650,000, 50% of any profit. 500,000 pounds, 50% profit of next sale. Arrange friendly, suggest. I think I've got to take that. 500,000 pounds to slate and the percentage profit. My concern with slate is, whilst he is 18 years old, he really hasn't developed all that much during his time at the club. And whilst he might have some potential, I'm not sure he's going to fulfil it here. And it is also half a million pounds. I suppose knowing that I've got that bid from Barnsley now, I can be a bit more aggressive with my negotiations with Shrewsbury. So I'll see if they'll match the exact same terms that we just negotiated with Barnsley. Okay, they have done. In that case, I'm going to accept both these offers. I feel like if Slate leaves the club, while Sosa isn't as good defensively and doesn't love important matches, for the half a million pounds we're receiving... 
it's a pretty bloody good replacement to already have just chilling in the under-21s in on trial. Anyway, that was a rather bizarre note to end today's video on, but I guess we will wrap things up there. Thank you for watching today's one. Will Slate be here next episode? Probably not. Will Sosa have signed? I'd like to think so. Next time out, FA Cup fourth round, Leeds or Oxford, who's it going to be? Come back tomorrow to find out. I'll see you guys then.